Greetings fellow members of the Esoteric Order of Gamers. Way back in July 2013, I did a video about basing. How to base your miniatures. It was just covering the basics. And I've long wanted to do something a little more complex and show you some other techniques for basing. As you can see in the drawer here, I've got some Wrath of Kings figures. I've painted some of them, but some of them sadly still remain unpainted. However, they are all based and primed and ready to go. So when the urge hits me, I can get these figures out and get them painted. Now, how did I base them? I hear you ask. Well, I based them with some techniques which I'm using to not only get them to stick magnetically to my magnetic shelves here, but also to make them a bit more spectacular. So I have some here that are on some rocky outcrops as well. So in this video, I'm going to show you not only how to shove some rare earth magnets onto your bases so it's easy to store them, but also how to use bark to make your bases a little bit more spectacular. So let's get into it. Now let me first point out that I'm using a particular type of base here. and These are the ones that came with Wrath of Kings by Cormini or not. And they're an actual well. You can actually put stuff in there. So I'll be using filler and putting the magnet actually in there. Now if you've got a normal base, this one happens to be textured in the plastic, but it's a normal raised base. You can put the magnet on the underside of the base, of course, but you won't be using filler because it'll already be flat on top. So you'll just be using your normal sand or kitty litter or whatever you use to texture the top of the base. Okay, here I am doing a bunch of bases. Now you can see I've put a little dollop of super glue in the bottom of the base and I've stuck on my rare earth magnet. I've done a batch of those. Note that I've used different sized magnets for different sized bases. For the smaller size, that's 30 millimeter and 40 millimeter. For those two sizes, I've used this um, six millimeter by one and a half millimeter rare earth magnet. For the larger ones, these ones, and also these huge ones, so that's 50 millimeter and 80 millimeter. For those, I've used a 10 millimeter by two millimeter rare earth magnet so it's a little bit stronger and will hold these larger models in place and now I'm going to put on the filler and fill up the well in the base so I've got some spec filler here and I've got a little plastic spoon that I got from um, an ice cream I think and that's a handy little tool to use so I get my base like this and I get a spoonful of filler Spoonful of filler makes the base get done. So there you have it now. I just used my finger here and I'm going to use the edge of the container. So I'm just going to wipe it off and then scrape the excess on the edge of the container. Wiping off the excess, spinning it around in my hand as I do so. I can also, if I want to, put a bit more on using my finger. And then I'm wiping it off with a clean finger from the edge of the base as well. And that way I can very easily fill this base nice and cleanly. There you go, wiping off the edges and there it is. Now I'm going to let that dry overnight. I'm going to do a whole batch of these in one go so I can have the dried versions ready to go in the morning. Of course another option is you can actually sculpt the spack filler stuff itself into interesting base um, textures. You could uh, wait till it dried a little bit and press some kind of texture on top of there, um, like, a, like a stamp. Um, or you can just use your finger and muck around with different effects. Um, I'm not going to do this uh, in this case because I want to get these relatively flat because I'm going to use bits of bark. Um, and I'm also going to texture it with sand as well. But you can see there's lots of op options with this stuff. There's different things you can do to get different effects, so experiment. Right, there's my final batch done. Um, they're all ready to dry. Now I find that leaving them to dry overnight is just about right. They'll still have a little bit of give so you can stick things on them and stick things into them. However, if you want to, you could put bark or whatever on these right now when they're wet. You just have to keep in mind that if you press anything into the filler, it's going to bulge outwards and you may have to do some cleanup. So um, that sometimes works and you can actually press into the filler if you want, want to. So you could embed stones into it. Um, stuff like that. However, I'm going to leave it to dry overnight and then we'll come back and do some more texturing on these bases. Right, I'm back and I've got all my bases with filler in them and they've dried overnight. 
Now the reason I've just let them dry a bit is because I can actually still attach things to it without having to drill into it. It hasn't become completely hard yet but it's still um, hard enough to not sort of slop over the edges. So I'm just putting some super glue on the lugs at the bottom of the miniature. And then I get the miniature and I basically just plunge it in. There you go. Easy. Super easy. And there it is. Um, I can now texture this base as normal. Um, if you've looked at my other video, I just put a bit of uh, white glue brushed across there and then plunge it into some finely ground up kitty litter and that's my basing texture. So that's a very easy thing to do. If I want to do something a bit more complex however, I can texture it in a bit more interesting kind of way by using bark. So let's have a look at how that's done. So I've got a larger miniature here and it deserves something a bit more elaborate in the way of a base. So what I'm doing is using bark. Bark pieces like this. Now I encourage you not to go rip this off a tree. Just go to a gardening center and you can buy a bag of this stuff. And it comes in all shapes and sizes. But say you get a lump like this, you want to cut it down a bit. So I get a nice large craft knife like so. And I can just slice this in two being very careful not to cut my fingers. There we have a nice flat piece and it's not too thick. That should work quite well for putting on my base like so and it looks like a huge rock. Now to attach it to my base I could just super glue it on but this is quite porous so I want something that gives me a little bit more strength and that's where I'm going to be using green stuff. This is a modeling putty and it comes in two different strips and you take some of this and mix it together and it's really quite handy. It's great for plugging holes on miniatures but it's also good for sticking things together. Now you'll find it helps to wet your fingers a little bit when you're mixing this together so it doesn't stick to your fingers but you just knead this until the blue and yellow are mixed together in a nice green. And there you go. Now I take a piece of this, roll it into a little ball and I take my base and my piece of bark and my good old super glue. Put a dab of super glue on the base. Stick my little ball of green stuff in there. A bit more super glue on top. The green stuff would probably hold it by itself, but I just put in some super glue as well. And then I'm going to squash that onto my base. And there you have it. Nice big rock plinth, ready for my miniature to go on top. Now I'll actually use a different miniature because that one's legs are a bit wide apart for this particular piece of bark. So using this miniature I want to place it like so on my base. So I get some paint, and it doesn't matter what colour it is, and I'll just dip those little lugs on the bottom of the feet into the paint pot and then place it where I want to Put it on the bark, like so, and that'll, that'll leave two little dots of paint. I've got a pin vise here with a little drill bit here, and I just drill two little holes where those dots of paint are, carefully because the bark can break quite easily. And then, using some super glue, I'm going to glue my miniature into place. So if you uh, need to hold the miniature more securely in there you can use a bit of green stuff in there as well. Into the holes. Just hold it there until it takes. And there you have it. Very easy to do but it gives you a much more interesting base and uh, it's also good for doing to those miniatures that you want to stand out a bit more from the usual rank and file. So as you can see we've got two different types of miniatures here. These are an infantry, these are leaders, and the leaders are standing on the rock plinth to make them stand out a bit more and look a bit more spectacular. Of course I'm just showing you the basics here. There's all kinds of things you can do. You're just limited by your own imagination. So with this bark you can use a pair of pliers and chop it to size like I'm doing here and uh, make sure you get those nice sharp kind of rock-like edges. Now the idea with this one is to take two pieces of bark and make a bit of a rock tower for this figure to stand on because he's a leader. So using the same techniques 
except in this case I've attached the figure itself to a piece of bark ahead of time and then I'm putting down another base piece of bark in the same way as I did before pop that down and then I get my other piece and attach that in the same way a bit of green stuff a bit of super glue stick it all together and then I will get this pretty spectacular rock tower and there you go he's looking far more impressive now this was a leader figure but it wasn't a very impressive figure but now he really stands out on the battlefield so I've done this for my whole range of Garitsi figures from Wrath of Kings and you can see they're all based now I get to the stage where I put on the texture and undercoat all these and start painting. Oop, there's a shale hand figure in there as well. I hope this has been useful. I'll see you next time.